When it comes to mountain biking, regardless of whatever kind of style you do, there's one bit of kit you should never leave home without, yes? A helmet. Now, you can mountain bike in almost any kind of clothing and footwear, but helmets are a crucial bit of kit. And when it comes to buying a helmet, well, it can almost be a bit of a minefield out there. So today, we're gonna clear it up for you. Breaking it down, most helmets are made of an EPS foam shell. And this foam is what gives a helmet its sort of impact absorbing quality. So EPS stands for expanded polystyrene. But it's not all that's going on in a helmet. Now on top of an EPS foam, manufacturers will use a mixture of other materials, carbon fiber, nylon, and various other bits and pieces to help make helmets thinner, lighter, denser, more protection in certain areas to really be as strong as they can be and light as they can be, but still passing the necessary test. Manufacturers will also use other materials such as nylon and carbon fiber in the construction of these helmets to increase things like ventilation, the density, the thickness in certain areas, the fit and the feel, but all whilst bearing in mind the necessary strength tests that that helmet has to undergo to pass. Before the EPS foam is molded into shape, the helmet's hard plastic outer shell is put into the mold. Then the EPS foam is put in and this allows it to bond and take the shape of that hard plastic outer shell, giving the extra protection. This is referred to as in-mold construction and that hard outer shell actually helps also protect the helmet from cracking on impact. Moving on from there, on most mountain bike helmets, you'll have some form of visor or peak. Great for keeping the sun, rain and any dirt or mud flying around away from your eyes. On lower priced helmets, the visors will sometimes be fixed in place. But as you move up the price range, they'll start to become movable and adjustable, as well as replaceable in case they get damaged. So if we go then inside the helmet, you can see these kind of squishy pads around the front, the back, and sometimes on the top as well. Now they serve a few different purposes. So you've got comfort first and foremost, but also they'll help aid airflow as well, lifting the helmet slightly off of your head so that the wind can rush through your hair, or not in my case. And then at the back, we've also got the retention system. Now, a lot of helmets will have some form of retention system. Some full faces don't, but you can see it on the Smith helmet here, this little dial obviously changes the diameter of that sort of inner circumference of the helmet there. Everyone's head shape is different, so that is really an important piece of kit. And then last but not least, of course, the straps. Again, you've got sort of two anchor points, one here and one at the back, down into the V, into that yoke there with a clasp. Yeah, sometimes helmets will have buckles like this one. You'll have magnets as well. Obviously really important to have a good solid fixing there as well, because that's gonna help keep the helmet on your head. If all helmets are designed similarly, how come they don't all cost the same price then? Well, first and foremost, it's worth saying that all helmets have to meet a minimum safety standard and various certifications as well before you can either buy them or they can be put on sale. So whether you're spending 50 quid or 500 quid, there will be minimum safety requirements that that helmet is gonna meet. If you're unsure, check inside the helmet and there should be a sticker somewhere mentioning either ASTM, CPSC or CEEN 1078 certification. That means they've passed those tests and meet their minimum safety requirements. There's also the newer standard of NTA 8776, which means that a helmet is e-bike certified as well. That being said though, as you start to move up the price range, you'll see certain helmets having more sort of safety features, much like this one here, this Smith Forefront 2 has a MIPS system in it, which stands for a multi-impact protection system. Simply put, MIPS is a liner or a separate liner within your helmet that sort of allows a slight rotation, dispersing a little bit more of those forces upon your head. Now, certain companies have developed their own version of this as well, but these ones here use the MIPS system. More expensive helmets will have more advanced reinforcement within the EPS liners, such as the choroid system in this Smith helmet. This helps bring the weight of the helmet down and lets designers create larger vent holes and air channels within the helmet to maximize airflow and cooling. The pads within the helmet can differ too. On a more expensive helmet, you might have pads that have antimicrobial features to them, allowing them to stay fresher for longer rather than a more basic helmet just having simple foam there. Other such features like goggle or glass integration, I can slot my glasses, which are designed these channels here down this Smith helmet exactly for that. Or this little cap here pops off and you get a GoPro mount that directly goes onto there rather than putting a sticky on your helmet. Those kind of features you are gonna find on a more expensive lid. Having said that, if you do get a cheaper lid, it doesn't make it any less safe because it does conform to the same safety standards. So you're new to the market. 
What kind of helmet should you get? You've kind of got two categories, open face and full face. Now the first is exactly that, it's an open face or sometimes referred to as a half shell helmet and looks like this, well, pretty much all of these along the front here. And the full face has the addition of this chin bar. Now that's obviously gonna give you more protection, but do you need it? If you are looking for all out protection and you want the most protection you can possibly get then, yes, the full face is the one for you. With the addition of that chin bar and sort of protection of the face there, it's gonna cover you as much as possible in the event of a crash and give you sort of the most confidence inspiring as well, which is why you'll see people like enduro racers and downhillers and people in bike parks wearing them. Sort of those more high risk scenarios, should we say. So if a full face gives you the most protection, why wouldn't we just always wear them all of the time? Well, a couple of reasons. One, that extra chin bar on here, depending upon the helmet, and a lot of full faces are, are slightly burlier than this Smith one, should we say, is gonna restrict airflow. So they can be very hot because they wrap all the way around your head, down and around your chin. Airflow is limited to a degree, therefore making you hotter. And also, there is additional weight. Now, there is the new breed of full faces like these where they have much larger cutouts. So they do increase airflow considerably, but it's never gonna be the same as an open face helmet. But because of that chin bar as well, it does mean, like I said, there is some slight additional weight over something far more minimalist. So the other end of the scale is the open face lid. Now, you can kind of see different variations of it here. You've got sort of a more trail orientated and a more cross country orientated. Now these are much lighter, the airflow is considerably increased. You don't have that all around protection, but for the style of riding that they're intended for, they're definitely the best option. Now last but not least, I don't have one here, but there's this new breed of helmet, the convertible. Now it's an, an open face like this, but you can get an attachable chin bar on it. So if you're doing long days in the saddle, so you've got a big ride uphill, you would have it in, we'll call it trail mode. And you get to the top, you clip on that additional chin bar and you can blast back down with that slight extra confidence. So let's dive into open face helmets a little bit further because there's a few to choose from here. And starting at one end of the spectrum is this, sort of the, the dirt jump lid. Most commonly found maybe commuting, dirt jumps, pump tracks, skate parks, that kind of thing. Now these helmets offer a little bit more wraparound protection at the back, sort of coming lower down the skull there. There's generally slightly less ventilation because they're used at much lower speeds. Uh, so you can kind of see clearly on this one, there's very few vents. I mean, there's a few in there because it's gonna keep you nice and cool, but protection is the main aim of the game on these. Moving on to a cross country style helmet. Now look at this. This is basically all about weight, pure airflow, but still protection. So you can see it's huge vents all over, really optimized for getting airflow through your head to keep you nice and cool. Whilst obviously still offering protection, you can see we've still got a MIPS system in this helmet. It's got goggle in, uh, sorry, glasses integration. You don't really wear goggles riding an XC. Maybe I should bring that back. Glasses integration, you can store your glasses nice and neatly on there. Now, the main difference of this over a road helmet, it does sort of come slightly lower. It does offer slightly more protection as well because obviously mountain biking can be pretty rowdy. Not that roadies can't, I know what they're like. But yeah, that's an XC helmet. And then we move on to a trail style helmet. I've got two versions of trail helmets here. We've got this one on my left and this one on my right. Both have got the same certification, but both are slightly different. This one here on my right is the slightly more budget option, but you can still see, clearly well ventilated. It's got the similar sort of ratchet system at the back, but it doesn't sort of have that glasses integration. It doesn't have that integration for having a GoPro on there. Uh, Certainly ain't quite as jazzy as this one. This one's my lid here. This one's Anna's one. This one, some cooler designs. You kind of, you know, pay for that rather than the block colors. But look, it still has the MIPS system. So it still has that multi-impact protection system in there. So it's still a very safe helmet. Now trail helmets are generally worn when it does get a little bit rowdy, a bit more enduro style riding. And that's because they can inspire a little bit more confidence. You can certainly see if I put these two back to back, see how much lower this one comes down around the back of your head, giving you increased protection over this one. Like I said, this is optimized for weight, aerodynamics, keeping you cool. Now, this one is obviously still clearly hugely ventilated, but the all around protection of it is way more. Moving on from trail lids then, we're on to full faces. Now, this is kind of an enduro style full face helmet. As I said before, this is called the Mainline from Smith. And it's this new style sort of lightweight full face. So enduro racing is essentially racing down a hill, but then you've got to pedal back up. 
So over a conventional full face, these are made lighter. They've got slightly different venting on them. They're more open at the front. They're not quite as bulky and as burly because you still want them to be lightweight. You gotta wear them all day, essentially, a lot of the time. So they're optimized for that very purpose. A full-blown downhill helmet, on the other hand, has a whole different certification altogether. It's got what's called an ASTM certification. And a downhill helmet is the burliest, it is the most protection offered of all the helmets out there. And I'll point out a few differences. This is obviously, like I said, the, an, an, a lightweight enduro style helmet. A downhill helmet's potentially gonna come slightly lower at the back. The chin bar can be potentially a little bit bigger. All these gaps are often filled in. This will be slightly smaller a lot of the time, but with mesh in there to stop anything from going through it. So reducing that airflow slightly, it's not gonna be as vented like you can see around the top and the back as well. And that is because it is designed purely to give you the most coverage and the most protection possible. So whilst that might be the heaviest kind of helmet out there, it's also the most confidence inspiring. It's also going to be the safest. So if you are doing the wildest riding that can possibly be done, that could be the one for you. So you've got this far in the video and you're still wondering, well, Rich, I'm not entirely sure still which helmet is the right one for me. And there are so many things to consider. So first up, try on lots of different helmets from lots of different manufacturers because all of our noggins are not the same shape, as I said. Lots of helmets, a medium in one manufacturer will not be the same as a medium in another. Trying on as many as you can is gonna eliminate certain uh, helmets which might not work with your head shape. Next up, let's talk about style of riding. Now, regardless of the style of riding you're doing, if you ride trail riding, you might still feel safer in a full face as opposed to a trail lid. You might not want sort of that open, exposed feel to it. So really sort of thinking about your own needs is gonna really help determine what type of helmet you do. Lastly, if you're into racing, then certain helmets are almost going to be a necessity. A lot of downhill races and enduro races actually require you to have to wear a full face. And if you're racing kind of cross country, well, you ain't gonna choose that. You may choose a trail lid, but you're almost certainly gonna choose an open face, kind of lightweight XC specific lid like that, because you gotta remember a helmet's still fit for purpose. I'm not gonna turn up to the skate park or pump track on that. I'm likely gonna wear that, maybe that. So it's just thinking about all the different aspects of riding that you do, and sort of taking that into account and choosing the right helmet for you. But we've come to the end of the video, sadly, hopefully, whether you're buying a new helmet or replacing an old one, this kind of explainer has been useful to you. Let me know in the comments down below. Are you kind of dirt jump, trail, XC, your full face downhill nah kind of guy? I wanna know. But that's it from me. Thank you very much for watching. I'm out of it. Until next time, I'll catch you later.